But you may not be able to understand the devs of it, but you need to understand how things are done, how, you know, how this thing is produced, how your basically car is produced to fix it or to work with it. Hello? Um, hey, yeah, we, uh, so sorry, the recording, um, it wasn't recording. So can you maybe do a very quick recap? Um, it just started. Uh, okay. Okay, thanks. I will do that. Um, okay. I think it's, um, it's so this current week's uh, project is about, of course, this prompt engineering in context learning with GPT-3 and other language models. And the main reason we are doing it is because the new era is coming where model generation becomes a problem because it's requiring so much money and so much resource and so much skill. And that bigger companies, just like Apple, they are building, um, or just like you know the Tesla, they build big, com big kind of products like you know electric cars or Macs or kind of Windows thing, um, and then we have to build for them. Like like iPhone came, and people have to build apps. We are now, uh, we will not be able to make iPhone every time. You know, we can't create iPhone company everywhere because it requires so much, but for iPhone to give people, we build apps and that's what we do. Now, in this case, the iPhone thing is now large language models that require really huge sophisticated things. And we will try to use them for our own, uh, for different companies and for people's benefit. And so the, the objective is to try to learn how to make products for using uh, GPT-3 and related language models. And, and so, the data that we would use is just, um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you explain what is GPT-3? Uh, okay. So GPT-3, as as uh, uh, I think Michael explains, it is really a big model that that is kind of pre-trained, um, and that it's generative. By generative, it means if you give it some pattern, it will feel the next pattern that comes with it, or the highest probability with, you know, it basically has, of course, there are many things that, that match it. So for example, Egypt's capital dash, you know, it's, there are many things that maybe like some high probability and some low probability. Of course, the, you know, the pattern you are probably expecting is, Cairo or, you know, Sudan's uh, kind of location in the world, dash, it's Africa, right? So it's a, it's a kind of, it tries to feel that, but also it doesn't need to, it, you can just say, write a paragraph. And there has to be somewhere, now of course, the data has seen, you know, some question that says, write a paragraph, and then someone has answered for that. And then it will write a paragraph it would now write a paragraph on its own dream, right? Because you didn't condition it on anything. Um, it just basically runs. So it can generate Wikipedia article. You can, you can give it a title and it can write that. That's generative, but also not only generative, it can do so many things. It, it does embedding to do that. That means it, it takes text sentence or anything that you call it, and it, it provides you some form of embedding, just like word to vague or anything. So it's a, it's a model. Uh, GPT series is just is a model that does that takes something you know that has been trained on kind of gigabytes of I mean I don't know how much the GPT two was trained on forty gigabyte and this ten times so it's about four terabytes of text that's like from internet like um, so it really has seen everything it can write codes so for example that the GitHub Copilot is just is from you know also VS Code if you use those ones comes from from models like GPT-3 because they have they have trained it and so it it can write Python code for you if you just give it something it will continue the possible uh, so does that make sense so it's a model it's just basically la language generating model yes um uh, to explain more uh, is it like uh, uh a library what our model called bloom bloom is just one 
one. There are many, so large language, they are all called large language models. You know, these days, what a model is described is by the number of parameters. And GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters. What that means is that the model itself, you cannot, you know, it's a 500 blah, blah gigabyte, just the model. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, GPT-3 is used for NLP. Uh, yeah, it's it's NLP model. It's a la language model. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Okay. So yeah, and we want to build different products across it. The only thing that is different from the past is that this is general. If it's a pattern, as you might understand and guess, if it is about a task, for example, let's say. Uh, you want word embedding, you know, like uh, in this case, BERT or something, you know, they, they give you one task. But these other type of models that are coming are really, they are generic. That means they don't care about the specific task. They really just are good for everything from code writing, including computation, like some kind of, uh, you know, one plus one, if you give it, it's, you know, one plus one is a pattern. It has seen it before. It is called two. So it actually does that kind of arithmetics as well. So it does so many things. It's just pattern matching, right? So it does really match um, so many things that it has seen. So that, that's just, and we want to use it because it's so good and we can't train such a big model uh, in, on our own. We try to use it for different use cases that replacing, basically we are writing apps in that sense. And so the, data that we are given for now is a data that is like a job description data and what the task is to try to use large language models to try to extract entities from 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 a from this job description entities are like you know what are the things that this job description you know it's automating job search right so uh, is it about machine learning data you know data engineering or or web3 what what kind of requirements does it have? Um, Python programming, JavaScript, and blah, blah. Uh, how many years of experience? That's also entity. Two years of experience, three years of, is it full-time or um, part-time? You know, uh, remote or not? These are all entities, what we call something that are, that needs to be extracted from that. So we try to, so there is an example. Yeah, uh, Margaret? Um, you talked about the, the LLMs on companies like Tesla and iPhone. What exact features about them is uh, made by using LLMs? Um, LLMs are basically part, like it's, I mean, what I'm saying is that it's an analogy, right? So it's basically the model. So if you try now to open, to try to make your own iPhone, what are the problems? Do you... um, like Rick, I don't understand your question. I mean, if you, let's imagine you want to open um, another company called, you know, Margaret Phone Making, and you want to reproduce, you want to create iPhone, your own iPhone. Um, the whole software. I mean, it's not only software. I mean, and also the hardware. The design, the thing, the skill, the knowledge, the resource, the money. Yeah. Exactly. So that's just what it is. It is, uh, you can't just, just simply, you know, if you were to open uh a hairdresser that you have seen in the us it's easy right because it's doable i mean you can just ship some of the things from i don't know some place and then you basically train people and then you do it it's cheap oh so it's cheap. It an analogy it's an analogy nothing got to do with reality okay thank you Okay, so sometimes you have to distinguish between my analogy to try to help you understand versus, so ex very good question. If you haven't understood that, this is an analogy. It's just that, just like me, you know, bigger, and the reason why that analogy of 
uh, iPhone I give is that once iPhone is there, of course, it's not just only a product because we want to make it usable by others for different reasons. For that reason, we start building apps for it. And that and the apps become the ecosystem how communities and companies start evolving of, of the business ecosystem. And that is the same in this analogy. The large scale, the large language models maybe are done by bigger companies like you know Google, Apple, uh, whatever, and Facebook and and OpenAI. Uh, but we are now having business ecosystem around it, and that business ecosystem, just like apps for phones, we are now trying to use these large language models for different purposes, and we are building tools inside, you know, ways just to to use that. And they have given us how the, their API, and we just have to use it. No, is that clear for everyone? If there's a question, um, yeah, raise it. Okay. And so in this case, what we want to specialize this large language models for us for our problem is extracting entities from data. But later also we will use it exactly for for this problem which is the client has that, it has a score, and we want to use it as a classifier for our problem um, and the regressor as well. But the regression, we translate it into classification, multi-level classification. Okay, that is clear and, but to understand, you know, it's simple right now, I could just open a window and I can just give something and it outputs. It's very, very, very simple these days. Uh, how to interact with large language models because it's API and there are you know web web browsers. The problem is that they are those are, cannot be product. They are just learning only. Um, so we need to understand to really understand and use it as a product. Just like you know, building a simple uh, hello world thing is fine. You know, uh, you can build a hello world app just simply, but to really build an app that actually makes product, let's say a banking product, a banking app, you know, you need to really know about the APIs, how they work behind and all that, you know, how, what the mobile system is. And that's why we are also, we need to do that. So the first task is actually, I encourage people to group in, let's say 10 uh, or study groups, so call them. I we didn't specify groups because this one, but I would really, really encourage because I give you a lot of references. I encourage people to start grouping and form a study group. And the first two days today and tomorrow, really focus on talking as much as possible by distributing and reading and bringing that concept. So form your own study groups, and you can just say like in tele in in. Um, a Slack, you know, I want to have a study group. Whom can I join? Have you formed? You know, just so that you can self-organize your study group. And that's because the papers that I give you and the things sometimes are slightly, you know, takes time. So it's better if you study it in a group and to understand what is behind the different concepts. You know, what what are the kind of the word to vague, you know, the BERT models, what do they mean? And kind of like and as well as also attention, self-attention, attention and transformer models. You know, these are different big concepts. So it's trying to do it yourself. You might really, really struggle. And it's also not the, the same spirit. What we want is, it's not to recreate them, as I said, you know, but it's to really understand what goes in, in these things, in the larger language models, so that next you can understand, you have a, a better understanding uh, what, you know, when you are designing uh, kind of prompts and stuff okay so there are uh, the first task is this is mostly what would be uh, the, the first two tasks are basically it's a lot more reading and um, it will be uh, you should be able to do it until Wednesday so that's why it's a lot of things so that's why I encourage people to form groups of 10 study groups so that basically would give us about four or five study groups and study about the understand about modern algorithms in positional word embedding, transform algorithms with masked, multi headed self attention uh, thing. And here are some places to start. Lots of them are, and I use from uh, J. Alamar. I think I find his, his illustrated 
concepts much better um and also just so because that you know uh, it's good it's not it's not just on the surface he goes into slightly deeper and there are a few more other that i i, I give you and then understand about text generation with gp2 gpt3 opts from uh, facebook Sorry, we can't we can't hear you. To now as a group. Uh, oh, okay. So as a group, you you would be able to understand what I mean. You know, it's just a hello world is fine, but to go from a hello world to product building, there are so much you know order matters. For example your pattern if you say my name is versus uh so how old am i you know where am i from uh, uh a question question and then the answer is let's say is from ethiopia ethiopia and then how old am i uh let's say i'm 40 and then what i want let's say is um i want something like um what do i you know, kind of like uh let's say which city do i live right something like that like just a simple example now if you now ask first how old am i first show the the, the pattern changes so it's sensitive to even order of question and answer the first, in the example and then there are many sensitivities because you know these are just large language models nobody, nobody understood them really well how they work even the people who create them they don't understand them right you have to know these are just black boxes and so there are people who have studied this and you are also contributing to that body of knowledge so you have to understand you know that and some of them um, are slightly mathematical don't worry about the mathematics just only to give you a little bit uh, flavor so understand the the problems challenge um, of prompt based learning and what other people suggest to make it standard and then in the second task it's understand techniques of prompt engineering and you're trying to set up or to think designing okay just because you are an engineer for a company what you want is okay you know if i'm experimenting different prompts how am i going to record my my way of experimentation and when i know that okay this type of prompt strategy is good how can i deploy that so that i can use it you know so that that requires thinking and pi designing pipelines for experimentation and for deployment testing debugging right so that's why you have to uh, think about mlobs pipeline uh, as well as also what makes prompt optimal and i give you uh, so auto prompt is you know one um it's very it's kind of like a code you know it's okay like github that that uh, it's trying to design exactly uh, how to how to design prompts by they call it probing you probe first with the example that you have you probe the large language model and you try to understand what it is and then after that you design and the same is nvidia has this p tuning um and stuff like that okay so then you would look so these two let's say are very much study plus understanding and plus how other people and in between you will find examples there are so many companies now that are built around it one company, for example, uses GPT-3 to really, really understand uh, reviews. Um, you know, like now, if you review a, a mobile app and an app, or if you review in, in Amazon, or if you review anything, it will just go and classify that according to, and then that makes it digestible, uh, actionable uh, insight it would give you from reviews. And those are companies that are built and that have raised millions, you know, just, just, just using GPT-3. There are many, many companies. And so there will be a talk also, I think this afternoon, about how uh, different companies are being built around uh, this generative um, um, large language models as well as image uh, ones. And then tasks three and four are, of course, you are trying to work with the data and you're trying to basically uh, come up, you know, test your understanding, design it, 
um, and and solve the problem, right? So uh, this is just much more of really hands-on uh, using APIs and use you know kind of testing your 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 ability or coming up with different strategies. This is just a, a much more of a research thing, right? Because I can't tell you this is how we do it, and I don't know also the answer. So you have to then, based on your understanding, you you try to just do as much as you can and report. So you would use automatic as well as also uh, non automatic way. There are different ways. You can use LLMs as embedders first, and then on top of the embedded ones, you can run, for example, machine learning on top of it, or you can just try to do it all with the automatic search for prompts. Um, so that task three and four are about that. And then of course, task five is just much more for you to um, then report everything that you have. As I say, when you experiment, just record everything, write everything, your understanding also in the first uh, two days until, you know, until mid uh, interim submission, you would report your understanding. So that would help you. And then finally you write just basically a blog uh, that would explain your your understanding. You'd be the very very few people who are writing blogs on this now. You know, it's it's not that it's just starting. So this would be this would really boost your um, your profile. So hopefully, and it's also exciting. It's a big challenge, but it's and you know, it's not like the previous week where you have a, a clear defining moment. What you will find depends on um, you know your techniques. So I. It's just basically you'll be able to report that, and then additional reading is more on ethics because you know there has been a lot, a lot of these things are trained on internet. Representation is an issue, and I, you know, I kind of invite you to read this, uh, this at least one blog on on the ethics of large language models. It's a lot of lot of controversy. Great. So then over the week we will have a few. Um, tutorials uh, what can you do with llms and text based image text based image generating dl models anastasia would give you on that this afternoon and tomorrow llms attention and transfer transformer based dla architectures i would give you uh, on that just again you know a summary of you know you would have a chance if you have read some of the references i gave you you would have a chance to to ask me some questions about the architecture, what it means, what, you know, things that you haven't understood uh, on that part. And I will also just basically review that. And then playing with mid journey and image generation with prompts. Again, this is a play, let's call it. And it's, it's just basically now you will be expert in that as well. You might build your next startup around that, you know. Um, so there is there's so much one can do with uh, there. But for now, as I said, one person was able to generate that, but you we would just go with mid journey and try to produce and basically come, you know, try to come up with something that's amazing. And who knows what other people can come up. Um, and then on Wednesday, Azaria would tell you about centralized logging and MLOps. This is important because of that when you are working, setting up MLOps, uh, kind of a new pipeline. You need to think about how you debug it, how you log something, and how you you set up. You have already done it, but just we we kind of in the context of uh, prompt engineering and you know in context learning as well as word embedding and using uh, machine learning. We will talk about that. And on Thursday, really, I would would talk about uh, automating optimal prompt search for LLMs and image generating models. So this is basically um, the lessons that we have learned at least we have reviewed from some papers um, would be reviewed. So just the auto search for Optima. And the deliverables as usual are, are two. Again, I might add a little bit detail on them, um, what needs to be just so that it, it's to give you guidance, but it's the usual. In transformation, your study from task one and task two, you'll basically be able to um, write your understanding with you know Illustrate. Just really try to make it easy for yourself on for the final so that you can use it as your as your kind of like you know conceptual mapping and then on the final on saturday it will be that and i have added i we will add also the rubrics here so that you would understand how we evaluate um, that we are still working on it 
And then the references, there are many that I have put uh, during my designing this challenge, the papers, the, you know, the, the applications, whatever I found useful. So you can really also check them. Some, most of these references probably are up, but some are not. Um, so you can just actually, for example, this is really nice, uh, critical and relevant research on, on this and comparing different models, their costs, their uh, thing, you know, stuff. Um, and also in terms of models, they're trying to open up because it's not costing a lot and they are opening up this thing um, also with just like Bitcoin, you know, kind of BitTorrent. Now they want to open a distributed model for people, right? So Petal is trying to do that. It is, you, we will try to also set up that if we have time, but it's to try to share your GPUs so that a large language model can run within us so that it doesn't cost us, you know, because for experiment, it would cost you a lot. So if we set up that using petals, for example, if people have GPUs that they share, you know, you make it and it, it gets easier. So we try to maybe play that one if we have time, but that's at least this reference is there so that it tells you that the future is big, basically models will be just like files and, you know, will be distributed through some system and you can run it, you know, it's basically, you know, to, to not be far behind, you know, like these bigger companies have a way of playing a lot and we don't have money to play and the gap will, will widen. And so people are coming up to democratize uh, these things and, and some of them are like that. So Cohere, we will use that one actually for our play because Cohere gives you at least 500,000 token experimentation. So you can register in Cohere and you will be able to just basically have API. They will give you API for their large, medium and small models so that you can do exactly using prompt or classify or generate uh, API endpoint. So that's what we would use for, for playing. Um, and then, you know, just the usual. And then here are how you deploy certain things like on um, when you have machine learning and you should just be able to start read these things. There are two, one is Grad.io that would help you deploy models as well as also, you know, some others. I would add more also on this, how the world is going, you know, how people deploying models, uh, machine learning models um, to use cases. So that's, that would be coming. Great, as slightly experimental this week. So it's exciting. A lot you can contribute, a lot you can learn, uh, but, Ultimately, try to, you know, this will really boost your understanding plus the product, that whatever product, how small, even the smallest product you build around it would, would give you some advantage because this is cutting edge. Um, and, you know, you would really benefit anywhere in the company you go. Having this kind of skill will help you to solve so many problems without at the cutting edge level, right? So, you know, if you're training your own model, sometimes you don't know, but this one is just real engineering. Uh, trying to use and and you know you can imagine in 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 three four five years there will be probably departments just like you have software engineering you might have prompt engineering as department or subfield um, either in engineering or computer science so you are just the flavor of it is here awesome I will stop there and if there is any question we can Mohammed uh, as I understood in the in the interim submission in Wednesday, uh, we have to submit or we have to read uh, the papers that you have mentioned and to, to submit our findings and our thoughts. Uh, exactly. In the GitHub part or, or in the code part, what we should do uh, yeah. is that we should uh, do EDA and pre-processing and some stuff like yeah, that. You, you could, exactly. It would require all of that, but a lot more is just like you have, you will have a text, let's say job description, and your goal is to find a strategy to extract entities from that, from a few examples. And you know, from a few examples, you would be able to then extract every job description now will be posted in, let's say LinkedIn, you'd be able to then extract its entities. That means, is it full time or um, whatever time, like, you know, how uh, kind of uh, remote or not? Is it, uh, is it about data engineering or software engineering or that? 
So it's you're trying to extract that entity. Is, does it require experience? How long? You know. So now you would use instead of your own model, you would use GPT three or something similar models to be able to extract insight or entities from job description. Or and then also I will add the the data on this uh, the client data that basically also another type with a small example without really training much you'd be able to extract let's say to score a document so that's what you do so for that the data processing whatever is smaller comparatively because you know you are you're working on text and smaller text because the data was already trained if it were about to train it would have taken you so much data now the data is trained even from three four examples you're trying to to get the best out of it so the process of course there might be a small processing because how you you know if a text is large the api will not support that the api will support only i don't know up to some tokens and so you have to there is called trimming how do you trim depends also the the as i say the order whatever so there are things but it the coding is small comparatively it's a lot more search and play uh, on the smaller text space and setting up a pipeline for doing that very efficiently. So there isn't so much data that you're, you're gonna be playing. Because so, you're just so interacting with them. It's deploying a uh, GPT-3 model. It's deployed already. You're just using API. I mean, we yeah. can't deploy. So you're just basically, you know, imagine, imagine there is a train, um truck that is installed okay okay what you want what you want is to measure to be able to say okay which trains uh, okay maybe that's not good it's it's um an analogy for that would be um it's a, it's a bridge for example that you have built and what you want is to be able to understand okay what kind of cars could go uh, you know it's kind of you're probing it you're probing this bridge to understand its strings because you are let's say so you're not the one who constructed it but the controller okay so you're trying to really understand how this bridge works you know what kind of load it can carry and blah blah but in this case mostly you want to use it for different purposes so you're, you're probing it but you you know you're probing it with just a small data and then you get an answer and then you see if that is what you want and then you're trying to come up with a strategy to do that so the data the kind of the inter it's you're interacting with such a big model that is deployed and living in the cloud through the api to do what you want there is a task that you want to do it's for in one case is to extract uh, entities in the other case is to score a document and you know that this thing can do it but what you don't know is how to do it what is the best way to do it to achieve the best result okay yeah i understood it okay thank you Great. anyone else any question yeah kind of yeah henok it is yeah like gpt3 like uh, bert for example where yeah, the only difference in BERT kind of thing, you have to fine tune. But fine tune means you have to get the, the, the model and add on top of it and train. You would use, even for fine tuning, you would need more exam, you know, more data. And also that it's not on and out of the box. It's like, a, it's a do, in terms of like the app things, uh, you know, uh, do it yourself kind of thing, uh, DIY basically. Because then you really, it doesn't come as a product you have to first put it in and blah blah you need some skill while gpt3 is just basically out of the box it works you just send it it gives you that's it out of the box it works you don't need to do anything while bert will you know fine tuning models that you need to fine tune are basically that some kind of you setting up something and stuff okay add yet a step by step it's follow the the part the tasks read the very first part 
the, the tasks first and then you would that basically gives you an understanding what gpt's you know what all these models are and the second part is also to you know it's just basically follow the instruction uh, and i know that it's but just follow task one is read that understand task two is read that and understand and then task three is you have data now you would end you know you would need to uh, probe it we will try to give more but i think anyone who has understand if they can write a step by step how they plan to do it that would also be great um, to share but i will so for those who really haven't understood or something like that we try to give a bit more summary at the end what you need to do but i don't think we'll the one part that we can't do is that this is up to you to come up with a strategy it's so simple to understand you know as i said you can just go to a web page and put your text and you say generate it would give you that's it that the task is done it is like a, a, a two minutes work because there are already web pages that does that for you the part is that there are no products they are hello worlds so it's to try to now use api endpoints to um to to start making it a product this one and i know for some it's uh, uh slightly trickier but okay we will try ask your questions as much as possible so that we can understand what you don't understand it's very hard to guess what you don't understand but please just take the time today to really ask your question in slack margaret um my question is about the data that we have yeah uh, what exactly uh is the output that is needed for the data so when you give it so the the dev data you can use it you know you can use two of that you know it may have 200 you don't need 100 you can give it two examples and you show it as question q for example you just say okay question is this um a job description answer is the entities so let me just present just so that you this is not this is kind of easier so let's just go there So here is the document. That's basically, you know, the the and then let me also just open one that has so this is cool here. So, okay, let me log in. You would have a login and um, playground. I would go to playground. So here is like some form of question and answer. I can, you know, this is examples that they give you. Okay, paraphrasing or information extraction, extraction entities from legal agreements, right? or in, so let's if you look at the example this is what it does it gives it a, a kind of a title you know you don't need to there's no it's a free flow it's just it's as a human just you can ask it so contract in this case for me is just just job description i'm gonna we'll extract relevant information from job descriptions here are some examples and i would do this Okay. okay extracted text um i would just go the text is so these are the text um text bachelor so like i would i would use this ones as a label so diploma so 
in, instead of influencer, I would say I can put all of them bachelor. Uh, I can use mechanical engineer just for now. Use physical sciences. And let's say three plus years is experience. So for now, just like for example, and experience. Okay, company, I will. In this case, I will just do that. And then another example I would give it is the second one, second example. So this one, is my second example. Okay. And again, text. So maybe just with one example, okay? Extract text. So now, you see, I'm asking it to generate this and that. Yeah? So is that clear now? I give it two examples, uh, one example. And I ask it, okay, how I want the answer to be is like that. Now I am asking it extract text. I'm asking it, this is a pattern. So I give it a pattern basically, okay? The pattern I want is that there is something called contract, and then there is a text, and then there is something called extract text, and then it has two entities, okay? And now I give it another thing called contract, and and extract text. So the pattern, if it's a human, ah, okay. I would learn from the example below, above, and then I will extract something similar like that. Okay, let's see what it, it can extract. And you know, there are top K, in this case is zero, that means put everything, you know, stop sequence, in this case is that, dash, dash, but I can add also another thing, uh, you know, called contract. So, so contract, because what I want um, or so now I want I don't want it to produce another example because it might then generate keep generating contract 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 as well it gives extract so we want also dash dash as well as contract to be the the end sec the stop sequence okay. Is everybody clear with this so far? I mean, I know that if you haven't played, it's just what is he doing, but let's imagine what, so what I am expecting is that in bold, now I would start getting what it thinks these entities are. It's thinking, see? Now diploma, so now contract is 10 plus years. You see, it extracts 10 plus years because it understands. And then diploma, it extracted, it requires bachelor in computer science. If you look, read this one, 10 plus years of software engineering work experience, technical experience in uh, release automation engineering, experience building, whatever. You see, there's computer science. And then it's also bachelor's, BS or MS. See, now I extracted from this very relevant thing because otherwise, imagine trying to find a way of, of that it would be harder just to write this thing myself you know to learn machine to learn it for me of course you can think oh you could do some uh, um, part but i can now give it just so many things here as an example and would be able to produce all the entities for me is that clear um yes it is so you're trying to really yeah, design and use, you start realizing now examples, whatever are, you know, um, an issue. So you, you know, if you give it more example, blah, blah, and this gets better and that, you know, it's just that, but the idea is very simple as that. 
Great. Okay. Um, and complex things you can do with this. And that's what we are asking you to try to make it a product attractive enough that you can use it. You know, you can build the next app in your, your next thing, big thing from here without, you know, by just understanding and coming up with strategy. Great. Margaret, do you have a question or? Um, yes. So um, since um, models like Dolly 2 and Mid Journey are, you can input text and it gives you um, art or a picture. Um, are we in any way going to use you any know. of those? No, that's for play so that you can understand what prompt, because whatever you design and learn here, you can use it there as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and Henok, there's nothing. The only thing is imagine doing what I did now with Spassi. It would have taken you setting up an environment, fine tuning for this or that, you know, uh, the, the 10 Academy one is using Spassi and Yar. But we needed to set up, it would have take, it took us so much time. Imagine this one. It's just that difference. That's what really paradigm shift. Suddenly from technical people, you are moving it away and then giving it to the public in different, to, to use it in different ways. And this I can do not only in ER, I can do so many things. And of course, it's, it will not be probably comparable even maybe with SPASI in some occasions, but it might also be better in the future because these bigger companies are building and improving it. So I don't need to maintain, you know, this is exactly the type of paradigm we are getting in, models becoming in their own, um, you know, a car, something like Android they're becoming. Yeah, does that answer your question? The answer is the same. The step is not the same. The, the step is actually for, that's called fine tuning and training. You need more data here. You don't need more data. Wonderful. Awesome. Then I will leave you with that. And it's going to be exciting. Just feel free. It's a lot more reading. I would say really self-organize yourself to be, to have a study group so that you guys can talk and discuss the concepts might may, may, may not be easy for one person. So, okay, uh, you you Johannes. Mm, okay, thank you, Yambaba. Just to clarify, uh, so are we, are we just uh, developing like applications the way we do for uh, Android or iPhone? I mean, Let's say we want to have a, a, an NLP application. Let's say we want to build the sentiment analysis, right? Yeah. So are we saying that we can do it with a pre-trained uh, model that we yes. can just uh, create an application for that? Yeah, yes. So let's call it, you know, like that, you know, you know, just let's say content email, Paraphrase information extraction, chat summarization. Maybe classify. I think in the classify, you can see customer service, topic classification. Let's say that one. That's the. Hmm. Um, so, so it's, it, it falls under the same category, but this could be positive and negative and yeah, you would, it's basically just, you would do it that way. Um, so another way is just summarization. Let's call it like that. Uh, so let's just probably uh,
um, document, okay? Document So, uh, um, just i am just coming up okay i i give it like that right so now um i ask it to generate you know, and now gives me negative. That's just great. See, like now I have done sentiment analysis. Does that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Yeah. So you can do anything. It's like the same model does everything just based on, because it's just doing pattern match. But your, that pattern match can be anything. It could be sentiment classification. It could be that now, is this good? How good is it? Do you measure, like, you know, having test measurement, achieving your goal, whatever is the key. But, you know, and I, I can actually um, task write um, a poem. I. Let's say by anyone from Nigeria or Kenya or Sudan, whatever, Kenya, just any name, a poet. Tosi. Hi. Huh? Hi. Just, Tosi uh, from Nigeria. Okay, so uh, tell me the spelling T O T O S I N. N. Is that like S I N. Let me check. Is that Tosin yes. Abbas? Yes. Okay, no. Uh, it's just. Uh, I have a question. What, yeah. what, what if you want to use another language? Yeah, does that you can work? try. You can try. I mean, they have they have trained it on the internet, right? 
So, okay. uh, is do, do you know like is he is it this one actually? Is that he's a guitarist or? Okay, I think it's different. Okay, so let's say read poem, right? What the hell is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, where is this? Right, poem. Uh, so it let's imagine. in the style of so let's imagine you know uh, and title of memory so the more data we train uh, the more accurate results we gain exactly i gave it example the more i give it example but now let's just say okay now i am generating um it's not true so it's generating maybe just i have made title something is uh, maybe let's just What did I do wrong? Uh, so let's just, uh, maybe I run out. Okay, so top P1, top zero frequency penalties. Number of tokens, let's increase to 200. Uh, there is also, I think, um, Yeah, there's something about my just sometimes it's this what I'm saying, it's just small. It it's small mistake could be. Yeah, so it's struggling now. Maybe it's the model I can change and I play. But that's that's a good thing. Like for example, it has um, it's failing now as much as So this is what it generates, but yeah, yeah, it's struggling. So most likely this happens 
it just doesn't know maybe probably this and yeah i that's exactly i can't even tell you what why um in some very famous ones it would work probably but that's that's a point you're just generating by example you're generating yeah and it's about to learn the art of this and, and if, taking it from the art to be science that means to be repeatable trustable understandable and robust hopefully that that gives you both in some tasks it really you can see it works in some tasks it doesn't if i give it now even an amharic one uh, for example let's see Fortunately, yeah. it's empty. Uh -huh. So okay, let's just see copy. Ah, that example is so shit. Okay, maybe. Let's take another one. Now, if I do this, let's see if it does, if it works. Yeah, it does get okay, negative. Now the question is if there was another example, like so. I don't know what that means, what that sentence is. Let me find. If there's an example.
let's just see that. You see? Now it's even, I didn't even give it. Uh, I didn't even give it neutral as an example. But you can see it has learned to even classify because that's seen. Yeah, so that's, I mean, it's really, of course, it's correct. So even for Amharic, it's working in some way. So yeah, that's you know a bit of experiment. No, you know it's just it's trained on the internet. That's why it's you know if you look at what well, this is not even GPT three. It is some other model that this cohere has trained. Okay. So it's they use this large and you can learn about what is that. But also the good thing about them is that you can export. So that means if you just want to use the API, this is just a Python code. You can copy and run it as long as you generate API. So that's what I mean. Now to really start doing it, you have to you have to be able to yeah, to learn and and do the coding you know, in your Jupyter notebook or vs code whatever start having and making it a product you know this is just some somebody else made a product out of it and they if you look at their pricing it's really expensive their pricing you know and and it's like somewhere is billing for example you know and pricing you know it's just they give you the price, right? The pricing list. So there are free ones, but there are whatever. Okay. So this is a product that Cohere is a product built on large scale models. And you can build something like that. And big companies are coming with lots of, you know, millions being funded now. Anyway, so let me stop there because I think we really, really run out of time. But hopefully you have seen it. So it's clear. One last question, if there is. If not, then let's close. Awesome. Happy uh, solving such an in and playing and reading and understanding. Okay, we can stop the uh, recording, Ten Academy, and